For those of you who may not know me, my name is Andrea Clark. Um, I grew up in this church. I've been coming here since before I was born. Um, and when I was in college, um, God started working in my heart and calling me to full-time ministry. So when I graduated from college, I went and worked at Camp of the Woods. Um, it's a children's youth Bible camp in Northwest Ontario. And I worked there for, um, I did an, a year internship and then I worked as the office manager for four years. Um, and of course, I always tell people, you know, I remember one time when I was younger praying and saying, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go and I'll do whatever you want me to do, but please don't make me work in an office. And then I worked in an office for four years, um, and I loved it. Um, but after I was there for about four years, um, God called me away from there and called me to Latin America. So I joined up with ABWE, which is the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism, and I served in Nicaragua for four years. Um, and I would still be there, um, except just last fall, or last summer, um, well, last spring, we had to leave. They, they were having some civil unrest in the country, and so... ABWE pulled their missionaries out, and while I was back here, um, God just started working in my heart and just telling me that he was done with me in Nicaragua and that he was moving me on to the next thing. And so the next thing right now is Northern England. Um, so I do have um, a slideshow with some more information to give you, um, and it's more interesting to look in pictures than to look at me. So um, Dustin, if you can go ahead and start the slideshow. Um, I did get a chance to go visit back in October, no, November. Um, I spent about 10 days there and met some of the other missionaries that are serving there in England. So um, they've, I'm excited to join um, the one spe couple specifically that's in Sunderland. It's in northern England. It's up by Newcastle, um, if you know where that is. It's right on the North Sea, right on the coast there. So um, let's see. What do you guys know about England? I know a lot of people have already told me, oh, my ancestors came over from England, my great-grandma used to live there, or whatever. Um, and I did some ancestry digging last year and found out that we have some ancestors from England too. I think probably the majority of people do. Um, but there's some typically British things that we know about, either from TV or movies. And a lot of people I know have visited England, either um, to visit family, to trace their roots for work or whatever. Not very many people go there on vacation. Um, but I know a lot of people have been to England. so. There's some typically British things, fish and chips and things like that. So um, Great Britain, as you probably know, has a rich Christian heritage. Um, these I just pulled out a few of these, but I think you guys will probably recognize most of these people. John Wesley and Charles Wesley um, were great um, British preachers back in the 1700s, and they also wrote a lot of the hymns that we have in our hymnal. Um, William Carey is known as the father of modern missions. He uh, went from England to India and served in India for many, many years. George Mueller started um, orphanages in, in the UK and worked there. <clears throat> Hudson Taylor, um, went to, I have to check. Yeah, he went to China. He started the China Inland miss, Missions. Um, Charles Spurgeon, there's, um, he's got a lot of sermons and he's a good pastor. And I had to put some women up there because I am a woman. Um, Mary Slessor uh, went to Africa in the 1800s, and then Gladys Aylward was in China as well. So, and this is just a few of them. There's lots and lots and lots more that um, went out and spread the light of the gospel from England to all over the world back in the 1700s, 1800s. Um, but that was then. What about now? Um, England, the country of England, has a population of about 60 million people. Um, and it's, it's a small country. It's probably about the size of Illinois or something. I'm not sure. Um, but 60 million people. And on a typical Sunday morning, there's only about 1 million of those who regularly attend evangelical church services. I should specify that because there are other churches. But as far as people who actually attend an evangelical church service on a Sunday morning, um, there's only about 1 million of them. So that's less than 2% of the people in England who are actively involved in any kind of church service or anything like that. So um, definitely a huge change from 200 years ago when they were sending missionaries out all over the world. <clears throat> a word that is really good to describe the spiritual climate of Great Britain is apathy. Um, they know about Christianity. It's a huge part of their heritage. Um, everywhere you go, you can see these huge cathedrals, big churches that People spent years and millions of dollars building, um, and they either sit empty or they're tourist attractions, and people pay money to go in and look around. 
Um, but it's just a very spiritually dark country. Some of the words that are used to describe it is post-Christian, post-modern. Um, it's just not something that has, Christianity just doesn't have any impact on most of their day-to-day -day lives. So um, what can be done? This is some of the things that the missionaries that are there are doing, some things that I hope to be involved with. Community outreach is obviously a big one. Um, two of the main things that I am looking at is maybe starting a community children's choir. I studied music education when I was in college. Um, haven't done too much with it since then, just little bits here and there, but I'm thinking to maybe um, just as a way to get to meet people, to make connections with people, and to have people get a connection with the local church is to start a community outreach. Um, and then teaching um, through the church, leading Bible studies and things like that, um, doing different children's clubs. Oh, and I forgot to mention one of the other community outreaches that I'm thinking about doing is um, starting kind of a community play group for um, parents with young kids that are around the in the community there and just once a week inviting them to the church for a couple hours and just having toys there that the kids can play with. And it's just a kind of a chance for um, the parents to get a little rest from, you know, being the only one watching their kids and also just to interact with some of the other parents and hopefully some people from the church will as well get involved with that and just a way to, to build connections in the community. Um, mentoring and discipleship, one of the things that I did in, in Nicaragua that I really enjoyed was um, I led a Bible study with a group of teenage girls and last year I started meeting kind of more intentionally one-on-one -on -one with them and working through some different things and um, I'm hoping to be able to start that again in England as well. And then just building relationships in the community, just looking for ways that I can um, get to know people. People in England are very reserved. Um, it's very hard to get to know people because they, they don't want to get to know you. They don't want to talk to you. They're, um, I'm reading a book now. It's called Watching the English, and it's basically, it's written by an English anthropologist, and she is studying English people and saying, this is what we're like, and this is why we do the things that we do. Um, and one of the things that she says a lot is, is she just talks about their social awkwardness. Like, they just don't know how to go up and start a conversation with people, and they would never do that because that's just so wrong. That's like, and if you do that, then they just shut down. Like, they don't want to have anything to do with you if you just walk up and start talking to them without a reason. So um, that building relationships is really, really important in England. So that's definitely something else that I will be looking into, maybe joining some community adult choirs and, um, I don't know, we'll see how God works that out. So um, if you are interested in being a part, prayer is obviously the main thing that I need. Um, giving is kind of one-time gifts you can give through the church. If you want to write my name on the offering envelope um, at any time, you can just give through that way. Um, I'm also looking for ministry partners, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about on the next screen. Um, and then come. Um, either come for a visit, come for a week, um, come and see what it's like there. Or come and join the team there if you, um, especially some of the younger people, but older, anyone can do mission work. So if you feel at all called to do any kind of mission work, um, I think probably a lot of people know, because um, I've said before, I am really burdened for Scotland. And I'm really hoping that at some point I will be able to transition from England to Scotland. Sunderland is only about an hour away. So this, to me, is a good way to start building relationships um, and and opening doors in Scotland, um, but I can't go alone, and so I'm praying that God sends some other people to join me um, in opening up the field in Scotland, which is just as bad as England, just as needy as England, I should say, not bad. <laughs> um, so as far as looking for ministry partners, it obviously costs a little bit more to live in England than it did in Nicaragua, so I need to raise about $400 a month more in my monthly um, support, so I'm looking for about a devoted dozen. I'm looking for 12 people um, 12 individuals, 12 families, 12 couples, 12 groups, Sunday school classes, whatever, that can partner with me for anywhere from $25 to $50 a month. Um, and you can give through the church if you'd like. You can give straight through ABWE. They have a program that will take it out of your bank account or off your credit card every month, and you don't even have to think about it. Um, but if, if anyone's interested in that, definitely come see me afterwards. Um, and if nothing else, just be praying um, I'm setting up meetings in churches and just trying to share what is going on um, and what I'm planning to do, and I'm just asking God to bring, a, bring these partners um, across my path so that, so that I can get there as soon as possible. I'm hoping maybe by May or June.
to be able to have everything that I need um, to be able to get there. So, so these are this is what I'm looking for. I also need just kind of some one-time gifts, um, just to be able to get over to England, get things set up, buy um, a car, buy furniture, furnishings, furniture and furnishings. Um, for my house and um, things like that. So I think I need to raise probably around $5,000 just kind of as a one-time chunk um, to go towards that. So um, so that's kind of what, where I'm at right now. So, and then it just says, together we can bring the light of the gospel back to the spiritually dark country of England. So that's what I'm working on right now, and I'm excited, and if you are at all interested in that, please come see me. I have a, um, a little display and some information back there. I do have new prayer cards. I know a lot of people have my old prayer cards from Nicaragua. I have a new one with the British flag on it, so um, stop by. I have a newsletter sign-up sheet. I uh, know a lot of you already get my newsletters either through email or um, just regular mail. Um, so if you're already on the list, you don't have to sign up, but if you don't get them and you'd like to, then you can just sign up back there. So that's the last that I have for this slide. I do have a little bit of fun, um, another fun slideshow. Um, everybody has said to me, oh, at least you don't have to learn a new language, right? Because they already speak English there. And that's true. Um, but we're going to have an English test this morning. So I hope you guys have all studied. We're going to see how well you speak English. So do you have that other slideshow ready there? OK, let's see how well you guys know English. All right, everybody knows what this is, right? It's gas pump, yeah. British petrol, here we call it gas, in England they call it petrol. So I can't put gas in my car, I have to put petrol in my car, unless I get a diesel. Chips, we all know what chips are, right? You go to Subway, you get a sub and chips, yeah? Yep, in England, those are chips, you're right, they call them crisps over there in England. So I can't, I mean, I, I will get chips, but I'll also get crisps, so. Um, biscuit, it's probably another easy one. We all like sausage and biscuits, right? Or you go to Essen House and get some biscuits and... But in England, they're called, their cookies are called biscuits. So I don't make chocolate chip cookies, I make chocolate chip biscuits. <laughs> this is truck, semi, yep. And there they call it a lorry. Not Lori Henry, a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> buggy. Here we have lots of buggies, right? Yep, they do there too. Every time you go to the store, you get a buggy. So. Pants, I'm wearing pants today, right? Yeah, most of the time we wear pants here, but in England, I will not be wearing pants. <laughs> Definitely not be wearing pants. I'll be wearing trousers. And I have to remember that, because that's a good way to embarrass myself. We all, you know, you go to the bank and you have to wait in a line, right? In England, you wait in a queue. And I don't know why they need five letters to spell queue, but they do. I think it's a French word, so. Um, bonnet, right? You give a baby a bonnet or... Pioneers used to wear bonnets, but there it's the hood of the car. They call it the bonnet. And boots. I didn't wear boots today, but usually I do. We all wear boots. And there it's the, the boot of the car, is the trunk of the car. And they're, especially the rubber boots like that, they call them wellies. <clears throat> These are zucchini. I like zucchini. There, I don't even know how you say that, courgette. I think, I don't know, I'll have to, so I will have to learn some new words, right? Chemist, I don't know, maybe when you were younger you wanted to grow up and be a chemist, I didn't, but some people do. But there, the pharmacy is called the chemist. I have to go to the chemist and get some aspirin, except they don't call it aspirin either. A tick, we don't like ticks, right? Nobody likes ticks. Well, I wouldn't mind getting a tick in England. Just a check mark, right? Tick your boxes. Okay, so there's so many more, right? Good thing I already know English. I don't have to learn a new language. <laughs> no, I'll definitely have to, um, there's definitely a learning curve, so. Um, and if, if these interested you, I do have some papers out at my display. It's like six sheets of paper that have just a whole bunch of these, the differences between American English and British English, if you want to flip through some more. There's lots more, so. Um, thank you very much for your time. I definitely appreciate the prayers and support that I have gotten from this church um, over the past 15 years or however long it's been. Um, I love you guys. I love being able to come home. Um, this wasn't my plan. This wasn't where I thought I would be in January. Um, but I've been grateful for these past few months here especially. And um, just wanted to say thank you very much.